So these are the tongs we're gonna make for the IFGS project called uh, Toolbox, Fill the Toolbox. And my donation to them is this pair of Terrier tongs. Cut off two pieces of spring steel, which is uh, 20 mil in diameter and 150 mil in length. One is a bit long longer because we want to draw out a clip at the end, so you can uh, you can fix your tongs to hold the stock you want to hold, so you don't have to grip it tight with your hands. These are the tongs we're gonna forge. I got one pair here, I made earlier. It's a bit worn out, but you kind of get an idea what shape we're going for. It's a bit different style of tongue, because instead of just having three set downs here, one set down, two set down, and the third set down, You make your first set down, then grab a fuller and fuller in this transition and get to get a very strong fit up here. Later we're gonna do an offset so your pair of tongs is not right-handed, like here. So one rein is at the right side and one at the left. We're gonna make an offset so our reins line up in the middle. So if you're right or left-handed, both of you can use these tongs. We're gonna punch a hole for an eight millimeter rivet. We're gonna rip them together, like here. Eight mil rivet. We're gonna dot the reins out first so we don't have to hold them in tongs. These are the tongs I'm gonna use first. Then we can hold just on the rates. It's very easy forging. <clears throat> it's important to keep your lines clean so you don't you don't struggle with how the shape is going out. That boss needs to be a bit like round. Could be have some shadows of that square shape. We're gonna fuller it in, set it down, but it should be round so this offset here does not touch your boss they're gonna you want them to articulate free like so
So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to mark all my blanks. I've got the rates already drawn out. I'm going to mark about 20 mil. That's going to become our jaws. Make a quick mark with your pencil. Then take a hot chisel. Should be very well hardened, so can you so it does not break or damage if you use cold material. So first set down, brush it, find your mark. Go to the round corner of your anvil, angle it, and then... So we're now at the point where we're gonna flat, flatten our boss area. It's the area between the jaws and the reins. Where the tongues are gonna bind, but they are gonna articulate. And you want them to articulate nice and free. That means your boss must be flat and a consistent thickness. There's, you don't want to taper in this direction or in this direction. And for getting your perfect flat surface and free articulating tongues. Kind of go about one or two millimeters far in the jaws, angle it towards your far edge of the anvil, then set your first hammer blow, put it back, and then with hard and fast blows, you flatten your jaw. You want to you want to create a nice and clean shoulder around here. Step is to upset our jaws a bit, so we hold it on our corner. So we're now going to use a lighter hammer so we can have fast and precise blows, gently rounding up our jaw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I made a mark about one cube away from the jaw. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna fuller her in? Yeah. Yeah. Broken our right away from the end. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ja. Ja. The hits I'm not doing now are just some finishing hits. Get a good brush, cleaning everything up very well. And now I'm gonna put it in the fire on the opposite side. And finish my to round off my jaws and my 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 jaw beginning right here and my reins and then brush them really well so you don't have to file them up or do any grinding to them. So starting around here, gently round them off at your time. As I need to clean my work as best as I can. For all my finishing work, I'm using a light 800 grams cross pin I made. So next thing is to puncture our holes and make our offset.
humans. What the name says is uh, they are used by farriers and also a lot by normal blacksmith. And well, first thing is they have these two shoulders. They do not always have these shoulders. You can just make them like this. They're a bit longer in comparison to these. And <clears throat> but the purpose of these shoulders is it makes your area between boss and reins a lot stronger. You get a really tight grip on your workpiece. And another benefit is if you're working Farriers do their toe bend like this on the horn, hitting like this way. You gotta push against your hit with your tongs. And these, these shoulders make prevent you from sliding over and it get, gets you a comfortable grip and I, I treat these tongs a lot more comfortable to use than like normal tongs like these or these are the best I've ever made but like these, these are like the regular duck nose tongs, flat jaw tongs a blacksmith would use for the same material. These jaws are very short, really short. They're like square and normal tongs get very long, jaws, rectangular, these are square. And when farriers do their adjusting on horseshoes, they grip it like this and hit it like this to shape it the right way and if you've got long jaws the top and the tip of your jaws is over the inside of your horseshoe and that means it is it touches your horn kind of is not very helpful when shaping. You could just grip with the tip of your jaws, but that tight, that grip isn't very tight, it's loose. You can move it. So that's the reason why these tongs are that short. There's almost non-material of the jaws on the inside of your horseshoe if you're gripping it like the furriers do when they adjust it here it doesn't get in your way because it doesn't hit your horn very comfortable so this tongue isn't just uh, great for farriers, it's also great for a blacksmith who wants a very comfortable tongue and I mean this technique, this technique you will, this way of bending iron, sooner or later it's gonna cross your way. I've blacksmithing since like three or four years and I've seen this technique done by other blacksmiths and it, cr it crossed my way. I've done it several times 
and I'm not doing any horseshoeing or horseshoe making just for regular blacksmithing and that's the reason I made these tongs because I've seen farriers do work and I've seen farriers do this uh, this technique with these tongs and other techniques like this or just they do not use it on a straight like we would do if you would use it like this that's a smaller a thinner piece of flat iron than the tongs are made for that these are made for 10 mil flat but if you use them like this you still get a very tight grip you will use it like on the horizon of your horn you could if you're hitting like here you got your tongs in a comfortable position And it's just if you've got a long hammer handle, but also with my Krenzer forging hammer, it's very comfortable. If you just want to use this tong, you got you only got the one tong, or it's just nasty and it's very. I don't like changing my tongs very often. That's why I make tongs that are good for a multiple. Uh, for different stock sizes or different purposes and yeah some uh, these are made from coin spring 15 mil in diameter the piece was 20 mil long these tongs end up very short I've seen the tongs I've seen the various use are very short like these or some are a little bit shorter and some are a bit longer so uh, you can do them, do them like you want these are a bit longer put a clip on one end so you can slide a ring or a piece of chain to lock your tongs So the tools I used were mostly my Grenzer forging hammer from Angular Forge, a lighter cross pin. That's the hammer I forged myself, 800 gram. A fuller. Cut. I could have used a handled hop cut, but I did not. I just used a uh, a regular hand uh, non-handled, just a chisel hot uh, hot chisel hot round punch to punch my holes forged by me and yeah I used uh, for holding the original original material I used some uh, pelgrim tongs I really like because they hold very tight to different stock sizes and of course I used some farrier tongs yeah that's it the rivet is 
a starboard rivet. It's 8mm thick, 40mm long. I cleaned up my bus area with a rasp to make it smooth and I've brushed my reins and my boss and jaws really well with a hot brush to make it comfortable to use. So I hope you liked my video and, and enjoy watching the process of these talks.